This is the story about my house and garden. It's a home that I've lived in for about 15 years. In fact, it's about the longest that I've ever lived in one place. The, the house that I live in is located one block away from Commercial Drive. Uh, I really love this home. It's a really special and very unique space that's quite unlike anything else in East Vancouver. I feel very rooted here. Uh, I used to always dream of building and being part of an eco-village, perhaps somewhere out of the city. But I've come to understand that that home is wherever you are. Nevertheless, I'm also fortunate to be living in one of the most interesting neighborhoods in North America. I now regard my neighborhood and community much like a village. And it's, it's about as great a community as I could find anywhere. When I think of home, I think of both sanctuary and community. Sanctuary is a safe place, free from the fear of eviction or dislocation, a healthy home where I can thrive physically and emotionally, a sanctuary from the stresses of city living, a place where I can be in silence, perhaps feeling like I am out of the city, embraced by nature, a place where I can walk barefoot, dig my hands into the soil, listen to the birds, watch the plants grow. I also feel part of a larger community. I live communally with two others, which provides me with company, connection, and conversation. My girlfriend visits, as do hundreds of others, friends, friends of friends, and strangers who come to visit the garden or cob house that we built in the backyard. I guess our location helps, and we seem to have a constant flow of visitors. We've had young travelers camping in the garden for weeks at a time, and many homeless who have found safety and shelter in the dense hedges surrounding the property. The cob house serves as an informal guest house for our many visitors. Despite this busyness, I've come to really enjoy the, the community feeling here, the opportunity to gather and connect with others and to get to know new people. I also feel connected in the wider community. Having lived here for so long and being active in social and environmental issues in the community, I have come to know many people. It is rare that I don't run into two or three people out on Commercial Drive when I go to pick up groceries or something. Down at the swim pool, a couple blocks away where I swim regularly, I've also gotten to know a whole, whole bunch of other folks from all sorts of backgrounds. There are many amenities in my neighborhood that help build social and cultural cohesion, creating a strong identity and sense of place among the residents here. However, the community is undergoing rapid change. House and land prices are skyrocketing. Apartment rentals are converting to condos. Rents are increasingly forcing some, including friends of mine, to move further away to cheaper neighborhoods. Dislocation is less visible, but more visible are the changes on the drive as new swank restaurants and stores replace the homier businesses of the past. The neighborhood is increasingly becoming a trendy and expensive place to live. While it is still a diverse and, and great community, I wonder, what will it become? Sadly, our home is also falling victim to the newest wave of development. Without being given the opportunity to purchase the property ourselves, it was sold to a developer who has plans to clear much of the lot and build two duplexes. It makes me sad and angry that we allow such sacred places to be easily bulldozed and ultimately forgotten. Strong communities are built on a sense of place of shared meaning of the importance of such places, of memory and stories, of a sense of permanence in place where people are not pushed aside, where children and families can grow up emotionally, psychologically and physically strong, a place to call home and know that friends and family will always be there for support. Motivated by such feelings and supported by hundreds of friends and residents who value this very special place, a group of us have been working to try to save this space our vision for this space is to create a community learning center focusing on environmental, social justice, and community development. To date, we have gathered close to 1,600 signatures on a petition. 20 local and citywide organizations have provided letters of support. All three levels of government have supported our efforts. City Council has even passed a motion to help protect the garden. And the Parks Board has made two offers to purchase the property 
back from the developer. Unfortunately, the developer is not interested in selling, and we'll be continuing our efforts by finding new strategies to try and save this space. I'm reminded by a poem by Rumi in which he exhorts us to look for the passion in life and not be fooled by false gold. And that passion that I feel for this house and for the garden, for the trees, moves me to resist the destruction of this place. The, the poem by Rumi is, is titled, Look for Passion, 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 Passion. Passion burns down every branch of exhaustion. Passion's the supreme elixir and renews all things. No one can grow exhausted when passion is born. Don't sigh heavily, your brow bleak with boredom. Look for passion, 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 passion. Futile solutions deceive the force of passion. They're bandits who extort money through lies. Marshy and stagnant waters, no cure for thirst. However limpid and delicious it might look, it'll only trap you and, your st and stop you looking for fresh rivers that could feed and make flourish a hundred gardens. Just as each piece of false gold prevents you from recognizing real gold and where to find it, false gold will only cut your feet and bind your wings, saying, I will remove your difficulties, when in fact, it only dregs and defeat in the robes of victory. Run, my friends, run far away from false solutions. Let divine passion triumph and rebirth in yourself. I'll light the fire you place the flowers in the vase that you bought today Staring at the fire for hours and hours while I listen to you play your love songs And the idea for the garden would be that you start to develop it as an educational space? Yeah, yeah. So that, um, that there would be a place, uh, an indoor space, where you could meet and, and, and talk about 
use it for, for talking with, with children and with adults. Okay. So um, a shared space. Mm -hmm. And then outside here, they can actually see relationship happening in nature. And that acts as a model of, of natural relationship. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Well, wow. that's really lovely. Yeah. Thank you.